Here we're going to look at a problem from the 2005 Slovenia Math Olympiad. This is question two from the grade four exam. So that's the highest grade exam. I think that probably corresponds to the finishing year of high school or secondary school. Okay, let's look at the statement. So we want to suppose that we've got this sequence of numbers, a sub n as n goes from one to infinity, and it is a geometrical progression of positive terms. Then next, we want to define this like partial sum of the logarithm of the sequence. So in other words, s sub n is the log or the natural log we'll use of a sub one plus all the way up to the natural log of a sub n. And we want to prove that if s sub n equals s sub m, in other words, this nth partial logarithmic sum equals this mth partial logarithmic sum for some m not equal to n, then s sub m plus n equals zero. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys some hints, then maybe we'll jump into a sol solution. So my first hint is really just the definition of a geometric progression. And a geometric progression is gonna be of the following form. So we've got a n is equal to a naught r to the n for some r bigger than zero. And I guess I should say here that a naught is also bigger than zero as well because we want only to have positive terms. Okay, and then next my hint is to use the change of base formula for the logarithm so that we can choose like a nice base for this log. So I've written it as this natural log, but as we'll see, we can really have a choice over any base. Okay, so maybe get this problem a go with these hints. We'll come back with the solution. So hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a full solution. So just like I said before in my first hint, I'm going to define a sub n to be a naught times r to the n, where here I'll maybe say my a naught is positive and my r also has to be positive because again, we've got this sequence of positive terms as laid out in the statement of the problem. So before we get started with the big solution, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of homework and that is the very simplest case here. So maybe this is case zero even, and that would be if r equals one. In other words, the common ratio of this geometric progression is equal to one. Okay, good. And so next what we want to do is be inspired by the following change of base formula. So we've got the log base r of x is going to be equal to the natural log of x all over the natural log of r like that. So next we can say maybe let's set s in prime equal to 1 over the natural log of r times s in. So notice that's just a constant multiple of this. So anything that we prove about Sn prime will follow for Sn. And notice I don't have the case when r is equal to one because that would put a zero in the denominator here. All right, so next let's expand this out a little bit. So that's going to be equal to the natural log of A1 over the natural log of r plus the natural log of A2 over the natural log of r plus all the way up to the natural log of a sub n over the natural log of r, like that. But now we can rewrite each of these terms from the sequence using our setup up here with the knowledge that this is a geometric progression. So I can call this thing right here a naught times r to the first power. This thing right here is going to be a naught times r squared. This guy right here is going to be a naught times r to the nth power. Now we can apply our change of base formula along with a logarithm rule to take a log of a naught out of this whole thing. Notice we'll have the log base r of a naught plus one. So that'll be this first term. So again, that's applying this change of base formula along with a logarithm rule changing a product inside the logarithm to a sum outside of the logarithm. So notice log base r of r is 1. Now next we're going to do the same thing to all of the rest of these terms. So this guy right here is going to become the log base r of a naught plus 2. And then all the way up to this last guy is going to be the log base r of a naught plus n. Okay, so we have something like that. 
But now we can combine all of these like terms. So that's going to give us n times the log base r of a naught just by multiplying all of the log base r's of a naught and then plus 1 plus 2 all the way up to n. But the sum from 1 to n, that's a well-known triangular number. So we can rewrite this as n log base r of a naught plus n times n plus 1 over 2. Now I'm going to introduce some notation. And that notation is I'm going to set this guy right here, this log base r of a naught. I'm going to set that equal to a, like that. And then I'm going to give myself a common denominator here. So I've got 2 over 2. So that turns this term right here into 2 in a over 2. OK, so that means that we can factor out an n over 2 out of this whole thing. And what we'll be left with here is 2 times a. And then what we'll be left with here will be n plus 1. So that means my nth partial logarithmic sum after doing this change of base is going to be equal to n over 2 and then 2a plus n plus 1 where a is the log base r of our a naught term. Okay, now let's maybe take that fact to the top, then we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we used like a change of base and some other tricks to come up with the following helpful data. So we had a equals the log base r of a naught. And then next, sn prime was equal to 1 over the natural log of r s sub n, which that equaled, and we found a closed form for that. That was n over 2 times the quantity 2a plus n plus 1. Now we want to see what condition this imposes. In other words, if Sn equals Sm for some m not equal to n, what does that tell us about A? That's actually going to be extremely helpful. So now let's suppose that Sm equals Sn for m not equal to n. But notice that that immediately means that Sm prime equals Sn prime again because they're just scalar multiples of each other. But that tells us that m over 2 times 2a plus m plus 1 equals n over 2 times 2a plus n plus 1. Again, that's just rewriting this equality in terms of the closed form which we calculated before. Next, what I want to do is solve this for a in terms of m and n. So m and n are like some nice fixed values that give this equality. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. First, notice that we can get rid of this 2 on both sides of the equation just by multiplying by 2. And then we'll have 2am plus m squared plus m equals 2an plus n squared plus n. Just multiplying things out, we'll move everything with an a to one side of the equation, and then everything without an a to the other side of the equation. That's going to leave me with something like 2a times m minus n after factoring that 2a out. And then next, we're going to have n squared minus m squared plus n minus m. Now I'm going to do a little bit of grouping over here on the right hand side. Notice I can maybe group this term and then these two terms as well. Then that has a nice difference of squares factorization. That'll be n minus m times n plus m plus n minus m times 1. So now I can go ahead and factor out this n minus m from both of those terms. That's going to leave me with n minus m times n plus m plus 1, like that. Now next, I can divide both sides by 2 times m minus n. And let's see what that gives us for a. So that'll give us a equals m plus n plus 1 all over 2. And then we have a minus sign in front of the whole thing like that. OK, so let's maybe talk about where that came from. So this 2 became this 2 in the denominator. And then n minus m and m minus n, those divide out to be negative 1. So that gives us this minus sign right here. And then next, I just reordered this so it's in alphabetical order so it looks a little bit better. 
Now let's maybe expand this a little bit. That's gonna be minus M minus N minus one all over two. So we've got a nice value for A. Okay, now let's bring that up. So we determined what our value A was in terms of our special numbers M and N that make this like partial logarithmic sum equal to each other. But now since this formula up here holds for all values of N, all natural numbers, then it will also hold if we replace N with M plus N. So let's maybe notice that. So we have S M plus N prime so that's going to be m plus n over 2, and then 2a plus m plus n plus 1. So I just replaced all cases of n with m plus n, again, because that holds for all natural numbers. So now we're essentially home free because we know this value of a, but let's maybe tidy it up a little bit. So we have s m plus n which is our goal, that's gonna be equal to the natural log of R times SM plus N prime, given this equation right here, which came from our change of base at the very beginning, but that's gonna be equal to the natural log of R times M plus N all over two, and then we have two A plus M plus N plus one. Again, that's from all the work that we already calculated. Now next, what I wanna notice, that if A equals minus M minus N minus one over two, that means that two A equals minus M minus N minus one, like that. But that tells us that all of this stuff right here adds up to zero, which is exactly what we want it to do, because that tells us that S M plus N is equal to zero which is exactly what we wanted to show, and that's a good place to stop.